WNBA, Adam Silver, CNBC News, Wall Street interview, the WNBA, the evaluation, can the league survive without Clayton Clark? The WNBA, is it a conglomerate? We'll answer these questions and more today on the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. Let's figure out ways to make it, because right now there's a bit of a conglomerate discount, I would say, on the league. Sure, sure. You know, I asked Adam about the WNBA because it's such a hot topic, particularly Mm -hmm. in the sports business world, because the uh, ratings and the overall enthusiasm have been off the charts. And now people are thinking, well, how do we monetize this? How do we keep this going? And as I tell you, Wall Street is knocking on the door. And Wall Street had some very, very interesting questions for NBA Adam Silver. Because uh, when they got right down to it, uh, one of the ones is the NBA owners uh, conglomerate. What it, basically, uh, you got a lot of individuals. Uh, the conglomerate is a corporation, the parent company, which the NBA is. And it has a lot of su- subsidiaries underneath it, which they control. The NBA struck its media rights deal in partnership with the WNBA. That whole deal was $77 billion. Any idea how much the WNBA's piece of that was? Karen does. Karen in the 200. 200 a year, $2 billion overall. Yes. So, and one of the subsidiaries that the NBA actually controls is the WNBA, right? So um, Adam's on there, and uh, questions came across uh, just as direct as you can. Uh, where are we at in evaluation? because the league is extremely exciting, but now we've got to do evaluations. And can the WNBA survive without Caitlin Clark? That sounds like a pittance. If in other terms, you could say, well, it's a six-fold increase over the previous deal. But still, that's a big delta between 77 and 2. So there's a little bit of angst in the ownership ranks about is this league too tied to the NBA, which... We're working with WNBA owners, WNBA owners that also own NBA teams, and then more broadly, the NBA owners on what the right valuation of WNBA teams are going forward. Hey, there's only one way this thing really works out. And this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We're powered up by Fanatics. Uh, we walked down the line. If you didn't see the other show, uh, Caitlin Clark's salary demand, and I'm talking to CEOs, right? So I've got Adam Silver, CEO NBA. You've got uh, John Stanky. He's going to be uh, CEO of AT and T. You got Elliot's going to do Nike. Uh, you got Robert Eigner's going to do Disney. So these guys have all been in the room. They're in the room now. When you get to CNBC Money and you're talking about Caden Clark, they're in the room. What the best way is to operate that league? It's very integrated now with. Yeah the NBA. There's aspects over time under Commissioner Engelbert's direction where they're still fairly integrated. They share the same office space with the NBA. There's a lot of weird things that are going on. I told you one of the Sacramento Kings, I haven't fully digressed through it, but the Sacramento Kings have a majority over. Okay, you got Beback who does, he owns, he's not the majority. This was surprising. And here's what's going on. You got the uh, Sacramento Kings general owner, general partnership, right? You got to look at partnerships because it gets kind of tricky. They are owners within the Sacramento Kings. I'm talking about the Sacramento Monarchs, a return to Sacramento. Here's where Wall Street's saying the same thing, right? But you got, uh, I believe it's Raj uh, is a principal owner, majority owner of Sacramento Kings, invests in the Portland WNBA organization. Now, you can't be in two organizations at one time, right? But here's the deal. You got to ask yourself, is the um, Sacramento Kings going to forfeit that right and turn that over to an ownership group? Because really, Adam Silver, that should be the Sacramento franchise now with the majority owner, unless she's going to die best out of the Kings. Understand, you cannot be an owner okay, of the Sacramento Kings, which is the NBA. Now you've invested in the Portland WNBA team. So that means now you can't have two owners in two different cities. So there has to be another ownership group coming in. That was the move I was waiting for. 
okay, to determine what was the holdup. And I discovered that holdup. But let's get into this because you got a lot going on right now, and this is all coming to pass, right? But under her direction, we've added some um, separate or departments, like, for example, where they're doing their own marketing right now. They have their own basketball operations department. So it's, it's a balance of things. But I'd say we're collectively looking at all those issues, figuring out the right way to operate going forward. So Wall Street wants to know one thing. Okay, CNBC, they, I mean, they're sharp, good at it. They do it every day. Uh, they're asking, can the league survive without Caden Clark? Okay, do we believe the league can survive without Caden Clark? Does the league believe it can survive without Caden Clark? Because now you're talking about the true valuations. Because, see, you cannot go in there and you can't have these valuations. Like I told you, I, I mean, I put it on the table. And folks, let me tell you, with the Money Mike syndicated right podcast with my background and all that i'm involved in okay the word gets to the top desk it's going to get to the top brass there's no doubt about it and there's enough transcripts running out there that you're going to understand what i'm saying i'm saying it very clear there is a reevaluation of the media rights in three years whereas if the popularity of this league continues to go up and up and up mm -hmm. media partners will in fact pay more money to the WNBA. but clearly you could see that adam silver and the owners are starting to think about, okay, we may be sitting on a gold mine here. Now, to the fans who have uh, put in the comments, I hear you. I'm coming up to you as well on those comments because you're saying, Mike, this is not possible. Mike, this is wrong. Mike, you're, you, you're the only one speaking this way. I am because it's corporate enterprise business, folks. And I'll tell you, Caitlin Clark, let, 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 me just, let me just explain to you guys something. Can Wall Street think, can you survive without Caden Clark? You got the league and every all the fans talking about the league didn't make money, all that. Let's skip that, folks. Caden Clark wasn't even born, okay? Understand, Caitlin Clark wasn't even born when the NBA started, all right? They had a six-year head start before she was even conceived and was born, okay, by the parents. So I don't understand the concept of how people take a business, okay, and you take a corporate enterprise business that somebody has owned for the majority of time, which it, it has happened, right? They didn't make any money, so they sold the corporation. The next person comes in, and all of a sudden he has a blueprint to make billions of dollars. What do we do? Take all the employees that work for the corporation, you guys get no raises because you didn't make any money while the previous owner was here? It doesn't make any sense in court business. That's, that's not how real life works, right? And, I mean, that is the case for the Liberties owner, right? Yes. Jones and an NBA they own an team. NBA team. Yep. Right. I mean, there's just a ton of interest. I, I, it's a, I mean, a couple of years ago, the WNBA wouldn't have been in a position, you know, remotely close to what it is now, but I think they may not be in a position, a better position again, even what you're talking about. Real life works in corporate business when you have investors or partners are ready to put up the money. Okay. Now here's the deal. You got people who are not even able, okay, to build out okay facilities if needed right so they got to go play in small well, you're not gonna get any name and rights on that you're not gonna make any money on that and when you look at it all of this is gonna go back to the lakers jerry bus the bus model what did jerry wars do how to get great western bank to sign on the arena see it starts out when it's just the, it's team arena but once you get big then all of a sudden somebody comes in and gets sponsorship that's why people say the WNBA is losing money i'm like that's impossible right because you got acquisition you put Delta's name on the flight, right? I mean, so what are we asking? The Delta CEO now, you're gonna pay the you're gonna pay the 50 million for the flight because you got your name on it, Delta. All right, and Delta makes more than 50 million dollars a year. So I mean, we'll see, right? Like there's obviously Caitlin Clark has really driven the popularity of that league, but still the finals, which did not have Caitlin Clark in it, that was a 25 year high this year. So so there, it's it's more than just her. We just really don't know quite yet. How much more? Is a lot more, though. Yeah. yeah. And what, I agree, Caitlin Clark effect is gigantic, but th this was kindling that was sparking already, and, right. and then it just, yeah. From let, let, let's quit all of this. How does it really work? This TNT five year contract threw a loop in the wrench, right? You got five years, 45 games. So you got Adam Silver. They want to know what the value of the league is there's too many partners involved and too many people want to get their money either in or they want to get their money out okay this is a risky risky high risk proposition and it came across and here 
Here's the other thing that came across. Here you got CNBC asking the same question I have. Okay, can you have two leagues? Folks, this thing is corporate competition. Okay, when you get on the money, CNBC money, I watch it every morning, folks. I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy here CEOs trying to fascinate themselves of saying what they can and cannot do when some of them know their hands are tied, right? From your standpoint, yes. would the separation of the two leagues be better for the WNBA? Is it like uh, unlocking yeah. value, some of the parts sort of thing? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what the standalone would be like. But I, I do think so highly of both, commission, both Adam Silver and Kathy Engelbert. Uh, it's great leadership on both sides. So you got Kathy Engelbert knows your hands are tied. You got a 90-10 split, right? Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. You got a 90-10 split. What does that mean? Of the $100 million you make, you get $10 million. And uh, partners, WNBA, everybody else gets the other 90 million. You can't make money like that. You can't survive. And that's why you're not paying the players. Now, that has nothing to do with the players. Okay. That has nothing to do with the players. Okay. Coming in and doing this in this fashion. Now, here's what the NBA did. And you know what? This is where you got to really look back and say, okay, NBA, were you intending to do this? I don't think so. But, you know, they, they gave you the lead in the beginning. Here, here's how it all starts. Yeah, okay, i tell you what. You go ahead and I'll give you this farmland, right? Because I like farming, growing up in woodland, growing tomatoes. I like cattle and all that kind of stuff, right? So you, you get the farm, right? And the farm's not producing anything. But go ahead, I'll give you the farmland. You can farm and make as much money as you want, right? Well, you're going to go ahead and cultivate that line. And you've been working on it for 10 or 15, say 28 years, right? All of a sudden, you got the ground, everything's right. You got all the bugs, the chemicals flowing right. Now you got a great harvest. Here comes the owner of the farm going, wait a minute, I want my farm back, right? So you've done all this work, which is equity, right? It's sweat equity, but it, 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 they're not partners. So it doesn't really matter, sweat equity, because you're just an employee, right? But here's the deal. CNBC wants to know, Adam, you got a competitive threat, Adam. They're letting him know, okay? And when you get there and Adam knows, you can't sugarcoat that because the WNBA now, you got a lot of people want to put money in. You got I think it's a question that needs to be asked to some degree. And, and in fact, I did. I asked Adam Silver, in hindsight, do you wish you had negotiated this in a carve-out way so that uh, it wasn't just the WNBA kind of going along with whatever the NBA did because the partners are the same. But actually, if they had negotiated separately, theoretically, they could have brought different partners to the table and maybe that overall number for revenue would have gone up. Owners who also have general partners and you got the NBA owners want all the teams. That's the plug and play right there. I'll tell you what the play is, okay? You got the partners and everybody, they don't want to give anybody a team. Nope, nobody get an expansion team. That's problem right there right because you got boom 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 okay you can't be a conglomerate and be a monopoly at the same time right because you know well, i mean come on let's go pack bell at&t bell monopoly you break it up you bring it back together again i mean you know you can't sit here how america was bit and say hey okay i'm gonna monopolize all of these ownerships of franchise right so and you got people who are saying i could do it just as good as you NBA owners. I could do it just as good as you or even better, but I can't buy into your league. So the next time around, of course, it's an 11 year deal. But, you know, if the WNBA is, in fact, sort of a rocket ship up and all you need to do, by the way, to your point, is to look at women's college basketball and the enormous attention on the big schools there to figure out this is more than just Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. You do wonder if we will see a little bit more of a separation of the NBA and the WNBA in the years to come. Right. That's why you got to have another league and CNBC, Adam Silver sitting there, folks. And I'm telling him everything I've been telling you, they're asking the questions, right? Because everybody's got to know. And when you, here's my biggest deal. And you'll find this. I'm different from anybody else. I've been in, I've been in the room. I'm going to tell those CEOs just as if they would tell us, okay? You get marching orders and you get something that's not right. Now, here's the deal. It's really, it's it's a different world because it almost works conventional, right? The WNBA wants to hire all women, period. But we want to be part of your league, okay? Let me repeat that. The WNBA wants to have a woman president, woman, 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 to the bottom line. But when it comes to your league, since you make no money, we want you to be a part of that league. They need to send the women that are in the NBA back to the WNBA 
let them keep their salaries. I mean, this, this stuff that they're moving around. Here's what you got, folks. That, the NBA signs a $76 billion contract, right? So the, the, the pie, here's how the pie flips, right? Because they got to go behind back doors. They got to fix this. They got to fix it quick, right? Because they don't fix it quick. What they need, people say leverage, that they don't have leverage. The players don't have leverage. Players have all the leverage. These issues are really interesting because it's happening across sports in terms of how valuable women's leagues are. And we saw it also in lacrosse, right? They're, yeah. they're exploring What's well, interesting you said that. Do you guys see Joe Sy uh, on the float there? You know, I so did. I did. And, that, and, you know, I saw him speak a few weeks ago somewhere, and he was asked the question, what are you most excited about? What do you think the best opportunity is in pro sports? He said, number one, WNBA. He said that's kind of obvious, but he also said pro lacrosse, which I think he's also an investor in that. Yeah. This leverage here is gone through the roof that they're going to try to get this CBA done quick, right? Because if you don't, you're going to have a competitive threat and start losing players, right? Because I told you the unrival is not unrival. Unrival is not interested in playing three-on-three -three basketball for the next, I don't know, 20 years. Or the unrival league is, is interested in being a rival competition, right? That's why I call it rival. But you got Caitlin Clark, right? And I told you the price tag's $5 million. I threw that number out. And it's not even it's it's not even going to get moved by five million. Let me tell you why Kalen Clark's not going to get moved. You can't have the player that's the WNBA face of the franchise, right? The WNBA face of the franchise playing in a competitive league. I don't even know how the. I, first of all, I'll take you back. I don't even know how they allowed Brianna Stewart, uh, current NBA players, to start another league, right? Because you got contracts. And the amount of money now, can you imagine the NBA players saying, hey, I'm going to go contract to play in this league, okay, when I get out of the NBA? Well, you don't need to play in the, in the NBA. They're not going to allow you to do that, right? So they're going to allow Caitlin Clark or any of the top stars that come in. Now, here, here's the deal. you got Geno. And I told you guys about Geno. Because Geno's trying to get Paige Bukers in the league. The, see, here, here's the flip side with Money Mike. Money Mike's going to break it down and make it make sense to me. Because the league, Okay, the league itself was designed for the veteran players to be able to make extra money, right? So that was what the league was for. Now we're bringing in high college players. Why would we bring a college player to come in and play the league? Because that goes back to me. Now you got to go get an arms race, right? And Kathy Engelberg knows that this thing's going to turn into an arms race. Okay, so here comes Adam Silver saying pump brakes. I ain't going to get anybody to pump the brakes because at the end of the day, WNBA owners need money, okay? WNBA owners don't want to get any money, okay, coming out of there from the NBA. Why? Because it costs too much, right? So this is like bonds. This is like U.S. bonds, right? You can get buy all the bonds you want, make the corporate payroll, because the bonds are cheap, 1% and 2%, right? But guess what? Now you got all the other countries are dumping our bonds and saying, hey, give us that money back. Now you want to borrow some more money? We got plenty for you. We're going we're to lend it out 8 9%. And I'll tell you what, that's a corporate choke on a lot of corporations in America because a lot of corporations have trouble making the payroll. Now, the WNBA has not had trouble making the payroll because they have been in the deep pocket. Now, here's what I want to tell you about the, the NBA and the WNBA because you guys really, we really, really need to look at this and look at this in a different way. Ladies of the WNBA, I say this and I say this with open arms. The NBA players were in the same position you were. Okay, the NBA players were in the same position you were. Okay, they were playing and not getting paid the money they should get paid. Okay, Michael Jordan, let me let me just put it to you in a very, very clear sense. Michael Jordan with the Chicago Bulls and Scottie Pippen were w more underpaid than WNBA players by a country mile. Okay, Mike's playing for two million care in the league. They finally had to make an exception to give him like 30, 35 million a year. Michael Jordan should have been making $60 million a year. Here's the difference that I'm going to break down to you. It's got to be different with the WNBA. Because the WNBA, those franchise players that you got, they got to pay them a lot more money. So it's okay for one to make $5 million and other to make $125 or league minimum. But them top players you got, you got to pay them a whole lot more money because the value is a lot higher, and you don't have to keep them off the courts, right? You don't want them. When you start playing a paying a player, folks, okay, $60 million a year. I'm not saying the women are going to get 60, but they sure in the heck can because they got the ability and the power to do it. They just got to go in there and negotiate with the CEOs, right? You can't be sitting around here talking to fans because fans are fans are fans. You know, we're hot and cold on Thursday or Friday. I never, I really never get into players too much unless this player is just really 
uh, just being a what you call a nuisance or conduct detrimental. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to the horse trainer. You got here's here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that's going down. You got six NBA coaches potentially can be fired with Christy size. You got five of them out the building. What I tell you about in the beginning of the year, WNBA needs high profile coaches. High profile coaches. There's no way that you can get in there in the WNBA and not have the high profile coaches. It's impossible. Why? Because coach high profile brings in fans, right? Now, here's the deal. You want to get Stephanie White and you got Caitlin Clark because this, this thing, you got, you, you got Wall Street want to know, can you survive without Caitlin Clark? All right, two things got to happen with this. One, Christy Sides got to be flexible. Uh, Christy Sides, love, they love her in Indiana fever, right? But uh, things didn't go as well as they could have. They could have went better. So you got Stephanie White. You try Keep them both. I mean, you go to Christy Sides and ask her if she wants to be assistant coach because at the end of the day, I think Christy Sides, go ahead. If you want to hire Stephanie White, hire Stephanie White. You got two great coaches, Indiana Player of the Year and Christy Sides. Christy Sides after last year, or Christy Sides go take one of these other vacancies because Christy Sides is not a good coach for the Indiana Fever. There's too much star power. Too much star power. You're not going to follow Kim Mulkey, LSU, Don Staley, South Carolina, Lisa Bluter. Iowa Final Four coaches have been to the dance, won championships, are knocked on the door. You can't follow and have three of those players. They're going to drive you nuts. They've been hearing three different messages. Okay, and, and Kim Mulkey, you know, Kim Mulkey's tough. Kim Mulkey's about as tough. The last time I had that seen that toughness in the eye of a coach when I had uh, it was Sacramento, uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee was recruiting uh, Vicky Ball and Pat Summit. I had a chance to sit with Pat Summit, right? You want to talk about a cold, a cold death stare? I could imagine Tennessee players when Pat got into you. Impressed in peace, but Pat was a great coach. But you sitting next to and watch a ball game, okay, with Pat Summit and how focused she is. The WNBA needs that type of focus in coaches because now you're talking about the game is too good. I'm concerned about a few things. You know, can they survive without Kaylin Clark? Well, you got to ask yourself that in a different way because everybody wants to say yes. But here's the deal. You got to you got to put it on your own and you got to live with what you produce. This is what the NBA players understand. WNBA players, you got to understand this. You can't go out there and go four for 45 and tell me you got a product in game five. Right. You can't do that. You can't go out there and shoot four for 45. OK. And I have no idea what an was doing, but God, are you going to put a valuation on a player goes one for 19? Can you imagine, folks, a player shooting one for 19 in the NBA? Heck, the, coach, the players start giving, stop giving you a ball when you go one for eight, one for nine, one for 10. And you're done. OK. How in the world do we allow that? And how can you go out there and go three or four of 44? Here's the other thing that scares me a little bit is physicalness, uh, the physiology, the building of it. Uh, my good friend, Dr. Thomas Reed. I mean, you're talking about going seven game sets. That's a lot for women. That's a lot. I, I'm telling you, there's a huge difference between a five game series and a seven game series. And you got to be in some best conditioning. You got to really know how to get that done. Men do it. And they hate it sometimes because it comes so hard to play a team seven games in a row. But um, they're going to do it. Why revenue? Everything is driven by revenue except the, the valuation because you can't start giving teams valuation. Okay. And they can't play in Madison square garden. That, that doesn't make sense. Right. You can't give teams valuations. They don't have a stadium to play because that devalues the team. The team can't be worth money on air. Right. So the WNBA Adam Silver is trying to figure it out. Right. Because they're in a pick. And they're in a bad pickle, and the pickle's not good. And this whole league, this is the thing: if the players, if they don't play, Wall Street's like you got a hot mess. And Wall Street's like one or two way. I'll tell you what they're thinking because I already know. I already I, I pointed this out. Corporate competition. They're gonna start another league, and they're asking the other league, "How much money do you need?" Right? Because that's what's coming down the pipe. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. Adam Silver got on there today. Wall Street, 
Can the league survive without Kate and Clark? NBA owners got a conglomerate going. Uh, it's a corporation with a lot of subsidiaries. They got full control under all subsidiaries. I told you, they have a lot of reach. The NBA can reach here in the United States. They also have global reach. Decisions that have been made, they're at the seat of the table. No doubt about it. WA team evaluation metrics without Caitlin Clark. I'm anxious to see what the projections are. What will Kathy Egerbert and the WNB project fans will be if Caitlin Clark did not play? We understand that. Wall Street. They don't know if you can or can't survive without Caitlin, but it'll be a surprise. But I do know this is another league. Can you put TNT in there? 45 games, WNBA schedule. That's a little bit more than survival. Puts it back to the two leagues, and that's what CNBC asked the direct question. Where are we going, Adam? Sounds like you're going to have two leagues, Adam. They're spreading it out because this is no longer a secret, right? The partners, yeah, yep. Yeah, we talked to them directly. They know exactly what I said. They also know the truth and what I did tell them, that it's wrong. So they're going to jump in there. They got to fix it. Caitlin Clark, 15 to 20 million. That's getting off cheap, folks. That's getting off cheap. And you know what? You you look at it. You got the, when the WNBA allows two players to go ahead and start the only what? Well, what? What's the difference, right? Wall Street says, hey, Caitlin Clark, we'll give you 30 million dollars a year to, to be a part of your own league. Okay, we're gonna make you the face on the logo and everything. Why not, right? Why not? Because Caitlin's gonna get the next five years makes 150 million. The fans are happy. Everybody's happy. Don't let that happen, Kathy Egelberg. Get it fixed in a hurry. These are some things that can drive you crazy in professional sports. Okay, these things are going to drive you crazy because now it's going to turn into there's not enough players. <laughs> At first, the WNBA had the luxury of just drafting two rounds, but if you got another league, they're going to take players. Nike's smart. They go out there, get them early, sign them in the contracts. Juju Watkins, Captain Clark's going to hold it down for a couple of years. Next one coming through is Juju, but folks, by the time that happens, oh, oh, I forgot one. The new league can drop the age rule. Ah, don't forget about that. So the WNBA says you got to stay four years. The new rule says the new WABA, as I call it, the Women's American Basketball Association, says two years. Guess what that does? Changes the landscape. All of this is coming down. All the whist until finally you get equal it out with the NBA and heck, we'll just call it a one and done, right? Because that's what it is. Players go in there, they play for a little bit, they get the NIL, but NIL, wait a minute. This is a Money Mike City. We're having too much fun, folks. It's the Money Mike City Katie Radio Podcast. The collectives of the NCA, the donors have doubled their participation. You see where I'm going? You got not enough. This is demand and supply. All of a sudden, you had all these players that the WNBA could choose from. You start taking college, taking their players back. You start a new league, taking their players. And you got the WNBA going, what do we got left? That's the question. But I'll tell you this, we're going to keep on rocking and rolling because at the end of the day, I'm proud of those ladies. You're bargaining yourself into a right position, Miss Jackson. You don't have to do nothing. The WNBA is under immense fire for correction, right? So here's the deal. All things are possible to those who believe. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. Folks, we just having too much fun in the WNBA. We're going to keep it going. I appreciate your comments. Don't forget, hit the like button or subscribe if that's the way you feel because each and every day will come with something a little bit different. Our goal is not to be, we will often be duplicated or excuse me, often be imitated, but never duplicated because this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We'll see you soon.